So what I would do, we're, we're going to say we're good through chapter seven. And I think we've had two days on seven. So uh, you might see one simple problem on center of gravity. But in my opinion, we just did it. So you probably don't need to like focus on that unless you didn't understand it. But the way to kind of think about it is at the end of every chapter are chapter summaries. So those are pretty beneficial. Look through them and say, oh yeah, I, I recognize all that. You know, we just did that. I probably could crunch one of these out. I don't need to spend much time with chapter seven, but there'll probably be one problem on that. It's a comprehensive exam, so I try to get everything in much. So then go back to six. Six we spent only a couple days on. So again, I'm not going to emphasize it, but you'll probably see a friction problem. We did not do wedges. So it won't be a wedge problem. It'll just be a standard sliding block problem. Probably push it up the hill or pull it down the hill, or you tell me what's going on. Is it sliding or is it not sliding? So that'd be a good thing just to remember that we have to calculate the down the hill portion of the object and compare it to the friction. So that would be just an object sitting on a slope and trying to determine if it slides. So if the down the hill portion is greater than the friction, then it slides. If it's less, then it's stuck. Okay. And then we could add an external force to kind of help push it along. So probably one problem. We're looking at 10 problems total. So out of friction one, out of center gravity or centroids, one. Okay. We spent a fair bit of time doing structures, both trusses and frames. So chapter summary on that is interesting because really you learned a technique to solve trusses, but you didn't learn anything new. Like we just used the same old equilibrium formulas. Some forces in the X, some forces in the Y, and some a moment. So probably just remember the process, like step one, step two, step three type of thing for a truss and a frame. And you'll probably see a couple of these. So now we're into like four problems. Um, these will probably be the harder problems on the test. Kind of lengthy. Uh, I won't have you to like solve this thing out completely by method of joints. That would take too long, right? But I might say solve for point F by method of joints, which means you got to solve for A and then move to F type of thing. Okay. So I might require a method, method of joints or method of sections. So look over that. It's open book. You can look stuff up, open notes, obviously. So yeah, you'll have a lot of resources. Up to you. So I'll be here Monday. You want to take it in class? I think that's the way to do it. Because if you have a question about a problem, you can ask me. <laughs> if you take it online, then I'm not really there. I mean, you can email me, but I'm not as attentive. So it's more broken up. But I am going to go either way because Kyle is going to do it online. So then I should offer that to you. So, yeah, if you do it online, I'd like you to do it at eight, eight to 10. Yeah. So again, if that's a problem, just let me know. It shouldn't be. We have class eight to 10. So, um, but just communicate with me. It's a bit of a problem for Kyle because he's working this new shift. So he's going to do it at a different time. But Monday. Monday, fun day. All right, moving backwards to chapter four. Chapter four is where we introduced the three equations of equilibrium that we then lived by. So forces in the X, forces in the Y, and moments. Uh, we did free body diagrams, and our, for, our focus in this chapter was reaction. So pulling the pin out, putting the two in, and solving for those two. 
So that's kind of where you guys can get mucked up. If, you know, if I say find the reactions, that's all you got to do. Just find those reactions, draw the free body diagram, find the pin reactions, find the roller reaction, find the fixed reaction, whatever it is, right? That's not resultant. So, probably a couple out of here. So that's, we're six now, I think, problems total. And these could be, I don't know, I, I won't make them too tough. They'll be just very straightforward. You could have a distribution you have to deal with. So remember how to deal with distributions. Um, could be a, you know, it could be look something like this, and then I do several things with it throughout the exam. So don't just see this and then solve for every member or something. Read it carefully and just do whatever it's asking for on that problem. But I like to do that because if I have you solve for the reactions, then I have you solve for this joint. You already have the reactions done, so it kind of saves you some time. I don't want you to have to work a trust problem and then have to solve for the reactions again. I kind of already tested you on that. So I do like to build up on problems. If you muck the first part up, that's okay. I won't penalize you for the second part, even though your numbers are wrong going through. If you do the second part correct, then you're fine. Okay. All right. So a couple out of there. Then chapter three. Oh my God. 400 problems in chapter three. It was resultants. So resultants of parallel force systems. So resultants of non-parallel or concurrent. So that was just this and combining the 25 and the 45 into a resultant. So they can start to look like beam problems, right? But if I say solve for the resultant, you just work with the 50, 20, 40, and the 30 to turn it into one force and where it is on the beam. So you'll probably get a non-concurrent and a concurrent resultant problem. So now we're up to eight. Right. And then there's going to be two more, and that could be like find the components of a force. I mean, it could be super simple like that, or a conceptual problem where I say, hey, here's a problem that's worked out. Where are the mistakes? So then you kind of got to dissect it. Yeah. So the non concurrent one, are you going to have to find out where it's located? Yeah, probably. But it'll be probably a parallel system. I'll keep it simple. So what's the resultant of this one? What is the magnitude of the result? Yep. So we got how much coming down? 90, how much going up? Yep, so it's the difference, 40. The magnitude of the resultant is 40. So if I asked you that, what is the magnitude of the resultant? That's it, right? And then if I add, where is it on the beam? Then you gotta like, oh, pick a spot, do the moments at that spot, take the moment, divide by the resultant to figure out the X distance of where it's at, okay? So just kind of refresh your memory on that and really just make sure you separate reactions and resultants. Somebody always crosses that up. Like I said, find the resultant, not reactions. <laughs> and you found the reaction, dang it. So it's not a zero. I, I always give partial credit. Like, you did the wrong thing on a problem and you did it right, that's you know still eight out of 10 from my book. You just read it wrong. So just be careful. That's gonna be it. Piece of cake. The only thing we don't have in there is inertia and we'll do that next term. Inertia is just a formula. Questions? How many are going to come on Monday and do it in here? Okay, good, because I don't want to sit here by myself. And I'll be online too. So while they're taking it here, I'll just be, I'll have my email open. If you have a question about a problem, you could email me, right? And I'll get that.
Um, all right, we're good. Yes, please. <laughs> 